New video time! Guys, I am Yard Offside FM, and it is very nice to see you again. This is episode 17 of The Triumph, my Football Manager 2017 Let's Play series as Hell's Teeth FC in the Tuvalu and A division. Welcome back for this episode, guys. We are a little ways into our third season here with this club, Hell's Teeth, in Tuvalu, and I'm going to show you a match against Newtow today. But first, Let's go through some of the results that have happened since the last episode, episode 16, when we took on Hame Amimi in the first match of the A Division, and we destroyed them 5-0. It was a fantastic result. I believe that uh, after that result, that was a tie for our best result ever with Hell's Teeth that has since been eclipsed, and we'll talk about that 7-1 Luamotu result in a little bit. First, though, let's talk about the NBT Cup. The NBT Cup is the Super Cup in Tuvalu, so it's the uh, it's it's played between the winners of the A Division and the Christmas Cup from the previous season. We obviously won the A Division. Luamotu, of course, defeated us in the Christmas Cup final, uh, and we won three nil. Olaf Award had himself a brace. James Lapio also also got himself on the score sheet. We were three nil up within twenty minutes, and then we just held on for that result, and uh, we came away with a little bit of uh, silverware for the start of this season. Although the Super Cup, like in most countries, really not that important, and I didn't prioritize it that highly. Still, though, better to win than to lose. Uh, Luamotu then we took on once again, this time in the A division, and this result was even better. A smashing 7-1 demolition of the Wolves, who really, let's be honest, deserve it for all of the heartache that they've caused us. That 4-4 draw in, in the first season, then the 2016 season that you guys saw in a live com. They've defeated us in a couple of uh, cup finals in sort of heartbreaking fashion, and so to get this result over on them, very happy about it indeed. Uh, Olaf Award scored uh, the opener in the fifth minute, Taumafai Ofati also scored, there was an own goal, Samaya Moeaga got himself another hat trick, that's like his 14th for the club or something, I don't know if that's an exaggeration obviously, but he scored a lot of goals for us and a lot of them tend to come in bunches, so nice to see him get a hat trick, James Lapio also got himself on the score sheet once again. Uh, moving on, we had a 2-2 slip up against Nanu Maga. A, a draw, you know, not the end of the world, but Olaf Etimani did get himself a brace. James Lapayo and Masoli Eti, or I'm sorry, Masoli Aliu can't even pronounce words anymore, uh, also scored, and that was a 2 2 result against Nanamaga. Not disastrous, but to uh, cough up that late equalizer there. Kind of disappointing. Uh, now, T, then, we got back on the right track with a 5 2 victory. We actually used the uh, new tactic that I uh, had written up. We're not going to use it today, but I'll show you this tactic just right here now. It's called the Lefogaki uh, 5122. So it's a little bit unusual, this five-man back line here. Um, and it was pretty successful. As you guys can see, we won 5-2. So a five-man back line getting that kind of result, that was um, fantastic. Now T uh, did score two goals against us, which is a little bit worrying. You would expect a five-man back line to be a little more defensively sound, but the formation does ask uh, ask players to pu to push pretty high up, and so maybe they just got in behind. At any rate, James Lapayo scored, Samaya Moeaga with a brace, Tomofai Tui also with a brace. Tui, by the way, has really started, in this match, he kind of started a, a really nice run for us of goal scoring. Uh, two goals here against Tafaga. It was a 2-0 victory. He scored old of award also got himself on the score sheet uh, to a 2-0 victory over uh, Tofaga who really may be our closest competition for the A division this season so that's a fantastic result really then against Pioneer it was 2-1 uh, not a great result I think Pioneer are, are probably the worst team in the A division and we should have blown them away but uh, we did still get a victory with Tamafai Tui getting himself another brace so Tui really an excellent goal scoring form we're going to be seeing him here today against Newtow he's worked his way back into the starting 11 so great to see the old man managing to do that uh, as for the table let's have a look at that here we are obviously top. Uh, with uh, We've only dropped two points from 18 all season. We, at 16 points, are at the top of the table. One point clear of Hama and Mimi, but we do have two games in hand. And so we could, if we win those games in hand, be seven points clear of our closest opposition, which is fantastic news. It's early days, but, um, you know, we... we, we, we are in very, very good shape to do a repeat of previous of the previous season's uh, title win. 
As for other people looking competitive, Lacanian United have played even more games than Hame and Mimi, but they are two points back from us. Lacanian United having an okay year. They, they do tend to be pretty competitive, and it would I wouldn't put it past them to go into a really excellent run of form in the, in the mid or later um, sort of third of the season. Uh, and they could be in uh, and about this second place spot. Tofaga, always a risk, as I mentioned. They have lost just once this year, and it was the result against us. Uh, they're on 12 points, which is four points back. Uh, but I think they are probably the team that we need to worry the most about this season. Also, Nui in fifth place, Luamotu in, in, in sixth I don't really, I'm not terribly concerned about uh, either of these two really being a danger for us this season. Luomotu obviously were very, very strong last season. They won the double. They won a cup double. They took the uh, Christmas Cup and the Independence Cup, defeating us in both of those finals. Uh, but they, as you can see, they have a goal difference of uh, negative two, and they've lost three times already, once to us and then against Tofaga and Nanumaga as well. So no shame in losing to us or Tofaga for Luomotu, but that Nanumaga result pretty disappointing. I suppose Luomotu could come back into it. We'll see what happens, but for now at least it looks like they are going to be a middle-of-the-pack sort of team for this year. So guys, uh, before we get into the match here, I actually wanted to do a little sort of thing that I've never done before, which is to kind of go through some of our better players and just talk about them, just kind of improvisationally talk about which things I like about the player, which what are their vulnerabilities, because that's never really something that I've done, actually, and I think it'll be nice, you know, just, just to kind of get more of a sort of understanding of the character of the guys in our team. First person I want to talk about is our goalkeeper, Mayo Tui Tapase. We brought him in in the middle of the 2016 season, I believe. Yes, we brought him in from Nui. We were struggling, you'll remember, at the goalkeeper position. Joshua Valawaga was, I mean, he was in absolutely horrendous form for us, Valawaga. And we needed to bring somebody in. And Tapase has really been a pretty pretty strong option as you can see his his attributes pretty nice in the in the mental department he's got some really good ones although not really at key uh in key areas for a goalkeeper decisions 13 is you know that's kind of a secondary attribute for goalkeepers but you know bravery aggression leadership these things are maybe a little wasted in a goalkeeper however he does have very very nice physicals and he's with reflexes of 11 he's always going to be a pretty strong goalkeeper at least for the Tuvalu and level and and you know his team in the Tuvalu national team I think is a testament to the fact that he really is the top class goalkeeper at, for for this level at least and we're very happy that he has uh, been such a stalwart for the club since we brought him in um, in defense, I talk about him a lot during matches, and I wanted to just sort of bring him up here. And now Masolia Eti, I mean, certainly uh, a player with without anything really to, to you know, uh, brag about in terms of his attributes you look you look at his physicals and I mean some of them are okay jumping reach is obviously useful natural fitness 13 I mean there's a lot of players with better than 13 but it's I suppose it could be much worse you know strength six that's not really good enough you would expect more from a guy who's as huge as Masolia Eti is um, but having said all that the way he plays for us it just tends to be fantastic. You don't see it in, in his attributes, nor do you see it in his player form. It's really not reflected very well, aside from that match there where he got, what is that, a 7.6. Um, he, he, I, I think he plays much, much better than his ratings uh, tend to give him credit for. And so I wanted to just point that out and really highlight the fact that he's been such a loyal servant to the club. And I believe he's on the short list for, for captains if uh, either Pearson or Aliu uh, are not in the team. So uh, next up, let's talk about Ma uh, Malona Vilele. He's one of the regions that we brought in in September of the 2017 season, so just under a year ago, and he really kind of walked in the door uh, pretty pretty much first team ready. Two stars, as you can see there. Not great, but he does have a really, really nice potential, at least according to my assistant. And he's put in some pretty pretty good performances for us, mostly consistent, as you can see, although I'd like to see them a little higher than this sort of six and a half kind of range there. Uh, a few matches ago, he did get that great eight points seven right there um and as far as his attributes go you know it's he's quite good at heading okay at tackling as i've mentioned previously in tuvalu tackling is one of those attributes it's hard to get pretty high so when you see a six you know it looks low but you have to kind of compare that to everybody else in tuvalu and six is it's not half bad um obviously a lot of work to do in terms of his physicals but he has some uh, mentals that that really give me a lot of hope for him in the future with determination of 15 and teamwork of 11 those are attributes that can really make 
a player useful in terms of their long-term development. So Vilele, definitely a, a player to watch. He's still incredibly young, but he's been kind of in and around the first team this season, and I think he's going to be a long-term uh, boon for us. And certainly because of the registration rules in Tuvalu, you have to have homegrown players, and Vilele um, is going to be a really important asset in that department going forward. Uh, moving up the pitch into midfield, Mayo Lima Lofa is a player who, when we first brought to the club, I believe in the middle of 2017, so the middle of last season, um, yes, we brought him in during the middle of 2017. Uh, he, he doesn't play very well. Uh, he did come into things a little bit later on in the season, raising his average rating up to that 7.27 there. But this season, he's been absolutely superb for us. The introduction of Tamali to Logo has limited his first team chances, Lima Lofa that is. As you can see, he's only come on for five times um I, I although we've you know we've only played six league matches so far so he's appeared in all but one match uh, so you know good on him for that i have tried to use him as a substitute when i when i've needed to and as you can see three assists a 7.34 average rating even better than last year lima lofa really he took a while to settle in at the club but he's really looking like a lethal talent now and i also think it's helped that we've trained him in a few um it, or we've trained him so far in one preferred move and he's working on another right now he currently knocks the ball past the opponent and i sort of just did this because my assistant suggested it but um i mean it's it's turned him into an absolutely deadly player down the left hand side for us uh, he can really drill past his man and and has become a, a very 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 versatile threat and he's worked his way into the first team uh, dispossessing Malesi Elio of his uh, starting spot we I also have to it wouldn't be a player sort of uh, diarrhea player review without talking about our captain Tofi Kai Pearson we brought him in he's been here since the start we brought him in at the start of the 2016 season and he's I mean he's never been superb although in the last few matches as you can see he's been you know he's had some really nice results um, providing plenty of assists but he's always been quite consistent um, a, a very reliable performer for us not great in the physicals department that's never been a benefit for him but the how we use him we don't need him to have superb physicals in fact um so the fact that he has these great mentals of you know work rate 13 uh 11 flair i love a player with some decent flair uh, he's got fantastic first touch and technique over in the technical department his passing of eight is I, it may be the best in our team uh, or at least very close to the to the best in our team and of course leadership 17 that's what I saw when I brought him in and I immediately made him captain because of that uh, he's just such a consistent and reliable performer and uh, I'm, I'm I'm really 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 and and I've also always been confused by this note over here my assistant says he's a fairly inconsistent performer which is just manifestly false about Tofi Kai Pearson incredibly reliable um, he has had one or two little injury issues um, you know, over the last couple of years, um, and that's you know obviously not a benefit, but um, you know s still a still a really really useful player and and somebody who I'm I, I'm just delighted with his overall performances for the club. We really look worse uh, when he's not in the team. Uh, Olaf Award is a player that we brought in back in January, a very recent introduction to the club, but I have been singing his praises since the day he walked in the door. My assistant says he's a four-star current ability player with a potential maybe to get all the way up to five. We'll see if he fills that star in, uh, but you look at his attributes and you can see why. He's got some really, really nice physicals. Perhaps could work on his balance, maybe his jumping reach, but as a player who's only 5'9 and really kind of can play in the hole behind the number nine, you don't really need him to maybe have great jumping reach. And so with, you know, with, with stamina of 11, pace of 10, he's doing the right things uh, already so far. And obviously we can improve his physicals because he's only 16 still. You can still grow physicals when a player is younger. It gets harder the older they get. I mean, and it, but it's in his mentals that you really see he's such a useful player. Work rate, 14. Teamwork, 16. Determination, 15. Flair, 12. Uh, tough, uh, Ola Luff Award is is absolutely, um, I think, a star for the future. And you know, as I've said repeatedly, I think he's going to be around for, you know, a decade plus um, at, at Hell's Teeth. He's really looks like um, one of the best players that we've ever brought to the club, if not the best. Um, also in the striker department, Taumafai Tui um, certainly has been at the club as long as Tofi Guy Pearson. He's been there from the very beginning, you know. Um, 
and he's been he's always been a really useful guy for us but um his current ability has dropped to one and a half stars and you know granted this is just an assistant you know, rating um you don't always want to trust these especially if your assistant coach uh, is pretty terrible um in his judging of current player ability or, or potential ability and obviously in Tuvalu all your coaches are going to have pretty low attributes in those areas um, but I think my assistant is, and another factor that can send down uh, a player's current ability is if you bring better players into the club. You know, he, he came in at five stars and it's dropped certainly because we've brought in uh, other good players and that's a contributing factor, I certainly admit. However, with all those things notwithstanding, uh, his attributes have declined since we brought him in. Um, Tamafai Tui, definitely a, a, you know, a player who I have a lot of affection for uh, because he was so great for us, especially in our first season, 2016. But really, his, his physicals have significantly declined. At 31, that's something that you're going to expect, and, and I think he's kind of heading into his waning years now uh, with us. However, as I mentioned, he's in fantastic form for us, and so the old guy is, is, is still... Still putting it together, an experienced striker, as the media refer to him, uh, and and so as long as he can, you know, pull out one or two good performances, he certainly is going to make it into the team periodically. Let's also talk about Samaya Moeaga, another guy who we brought in from the very beginning. He's even older than Tamafai Tui, um, however, he, he hasn't really declined as dramatically as Tui has. Um, obviously, he has a lot of issues; his mentals are horrendous, um, but his physicals remain okay despite his age, uh, with jumping reach of eleven and heading of 12 he's always going to be a threat as a target man as you can see there uh, he's got all 10 little dots around that circle which means he's a perfect fit for the target man role and that's how we usually use him that's how we're going to be using him today as you can see you know the fact that he's he's 32 he gets tired more easily um, it sort of forces him out of the team periodically and especially with ward and lapayo in such excellent form um you know, it's hard for him to, 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 to get into the team, but, you know, he does obviously still put on some fantastic performances, and he is a hat-trick maestro, as I mentioned earlier, scores in bunches. Um, as for a player who's going to be left out of the team today, because we do have a match in four days' time, and I just wanted to rest him because he's been playing a fair bit, uh, James Lapayo. I mean, he's had one of the, probably the best start to a season of any player that we've ever had. He started off as somebody who was fairly inconsistent uh, for us, but he was providing a decent number of assists throughout Season 1. He improved on that in Season 2, and in Season 3, he's been doing everything. Assists, scoring, he's been just a fantastic player, and at 25, you would expect that he's really coming into his prime, James Lapayo. Uh, such a useful player, um, and um, I'm really happy that we have him at the club, and that we've repeatedly managed to keep him at the club despite the fact that that other teams have come in for him um you know James Lapayo has not always been the most consistent of players in the past but it seems like this year he's really finally going to come into his own and and do what we've been needing him to do finally there is one player who I, I you know I've been singing the praises of all these guys thus far and there is one guy who unfortunately has kind of dropped out of the team more or less entirely and that's Faisua Feoto of course you'll remember in 2017 when we brought him in he was a revelation we were having so many problems with other strikers falling out of form and Feoto came in and just did absolutely what we needed him to do and as you can see, he does have those good mentals that I always like to see. Determination 11, teamwork 12, off the ball 10, flair 15. So these, you know, these are pretty nice things to see in a in a in a in a player uh, at any position. And with you know one or two critical technicals, um, you know, such as finishing 12 and first touch seven. Um, a pretty useful guy in that department however we have brought in a number of other very very skilled strikers and uh Feoto's potential has dropped quite a bit at least according to my assistant when we brought him in I think he was four star potential now he's dropped down to only two so it's looking like Feoto is perhaps a player who's not going to make it as hell at hell's teeth but you know I look back on his 2017 performances with a lot of affection and a lot of sort of nostalgia and definitely a player who did a job for us when we needed him to and uh, I will be sad on, on the day that we that we have to let him go, and that day may be soon, but you know, you've got to look out for the club's best interest and not make sentimental decisions. So today, as I mentioned, we're taking on Newtow. They are down in 10th. Not a very good year for them thus far. There's nothing about this match that makes me really think, oh, we should do Newtow as a live com. I sort of just needed to do a live com, so I just kind of randomly picked a match, and Newtow are the, um, the people who, who, who have been selected. 
Obviously, in Utah, you'll remember, it started 2017 so well. They were top of the table for much of the year. They did fall apart late on, and, uh, of course, we won the title in the end. But, you know, a club that, that had a, a pretty good history, and they have won two matches against us in the past, it looks like. So they do have the ability to pull a result over on us. I would expect a win today, um, but, uh, you know, in the past, they've they've done pretty well. Um, as you can see, the pitch has been relayed and in, in at the Tuvalu Sports Ground. It'll rapidly deteriorate, but it's a good pitch today, which is pretty awesome. 68 degrees, uh, calm, pretty nice day for, for a little bit of football, actually. Jelly Mulogo, who is the strictest referee in Tuvalu, is our guy today, which has contributed to the fact that we've selected the Tengako, um, which is not, it's a sort of a standoff tackling sort of formation, uh, whereas the Lefagaki is very hard tackling. Um, the players are instructed to get stuck in, and you know bookings can really become an issue when you have a somewhat strict referee as we do today. Tapase in goal for us. Naisali Alasanu, who I didn't really have talk about in the player uh, review kind of section, but um, certainly a player who has a, a huge amount of potential, quite young, and uh, it's quite inconsistent for us, but uh, hopefully he'll he'll become more consistent as he gets older. Uh, Toluone Tusela also is in the back line, as is Tamafai Ofati. To Loco, uh, a really good developing youth prospect we brought in back in January. He's over on the right. Lima Lofo, we talked about him on the left. Pearson and Tini Lau, another new guy from January. Uh, he's going to be playing at ball winning midfielder where he 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 doesn't always play well. Tini Lau, he's sort of frustrating for a guy who supposedly is a four star current ability player. He doesn't play like a four star current ability player, but at ball winning midfielder, I'm relatively satisfied with how he performs. So I'm happy to see him in the team today for that. Um, we are going with Moeaga, Tamafai Tui, and Ward at the, in the striker positions. I have left James Lapayo out. I talked about that, which has given him a break with the match coming in four days. And so uh, we, we, I just wanted to, to rest him for a little bit, especially because Lapayo's form has dropped off a little bit in the last few matches. Um, I'm sure he'll he'll regain it in the past. That's always been an issue with Lapayo. He, he he's always been relatively injury free, um, but he does regrettably kind of drop out of form, and it's sort of you you just kind of have to wait it out until he he finds his feet again. As you can see, we are the favorites by quite a distance. The press think we're going to win by three or four goals. I definitely hope that. Um, so tunnel interview, we are being asked why uh, Malona Vilele has been left out of the team. I mean, really, it was just sort of squad rotation. It's nothing personal against the guy. Um, what what should we do? Let's calmly say, um, let's just avoid it. Let's. T I'd rather talk about the eleven people who will be starting the match. What's the thinking behind the inclusion of Toluona to Sela instead? Boy, they're really pestering about this. Why do you care so much about a sixteen-year-old? who he trained well this week and deserves a chance. Why do you care so much about a 16-year-old center back? He's definitely a developing talent, but who cares? Anyway, let's get into the team talk here today. We are on a good run, and we should keep it up by encouraging the team, obviously, but we can't give that one every week, you know? Come on, Timoani. My assistant, Timoani, always wants to do the same team talk, and it's like, bro, that's not, that's not going to work every time. They're going to get all bitchy and say, oh, we want more interesting team talks. I wish you could, you know, do a custom team talk where you just walk in the door and say, pizza for everyone, you know. I bet they would love that. Everybody would seem super motivated by that. Um, the obligatory I have faith in you barrage. Now, before we get into this match against Newtow, um, I, Newtow, they've been really poor this year. I can't even think of any major standout players that they have that we need to be concerned about. I would be, I'll be hugely disappointed if, if we're held to a draw here. Um, but we'll see what happens. Now that I've said that, I've jinxed it. Newtow uh, are starting things off in possession. This is a kickoff highlight, so it'll come to nothing, obviously. Um, although 17 seconds in, uh, still Newtow in possession. And that ball over to the wing has gone out of play. And that should be the end of the kickoff highlight. Tusela heads that into Tui's path. Lima Lofa over on the left side. He's got a fair bit of space and he can dribble around people. As I mentioned, that uh, run or that knocks ball past opponent thing is really useful. Tini Lau with a horrendous miss. He was in acres of space, and that is well wide of the post. I mean, he didn't know it, but he could have taken a touch and and uh, and easily um, slotted that into the left hand side of the net. That long ball for Moyaga is successfully brought down. Can Tui find someone? Tini Lau 
Teeny Lau trying to work it around. He's gone outside and has been dispossessed, but Tologo mops it up. That ball in for Moeaga, who gets a difficult header on target. It is saved by the Newtow goalkeeper. Um, but we finally get a shot on target 10 minutes in, and that's good to see. Ward skies that. Um, Ward taking free kick duties with Alu out of the team. Uh, you know, Ward is not a spectacular free kick taker, but his attributes in the free kick taking department have been rising rapidly. Uh-oh, we have an injury to Moyaga. We're going to have to deal with that. Looks like he suffered a dead leg. We should substitute him as soon as possible. Oh, Samaya Moyaga. You know, I talked about James Lapaya being relatively injury-free. Moyaga is just the opposite. He's a player who's very consistent, always plays really well for us, scores goals in, in droves, but Moaga has had his injury problems uh, th over the years, and that's very disappointing. I did not sort out my substitutes, and I don't have a striker on the bench. Well, this is a travesty. However, Teeny Lau can be moved up here. Shall I actually move him to uh, the attacking midfielder spot and put Tui? Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I'll put Tui up there. And then we're going to bring on a midfielder instead here. I could either use... Uh, to, I could move to Tusela up uh, into the ball-winning midfielder role. I think that's probably the best idea. Let's put Tusela up at ball-winning midfielder where he's pretty good. And then we're going to bring on a center back. We'll bring on Vilele, who the press were so disappointed that he's not in the team. Uh, this will make us look a little more defensive, bringing on a center back for an injured striker. But I think... Um, you know, I'm still confident that that we'll get a win today. And, and once we do get that goal, I think it'll be useful to... Um, um, to uh, to have a more defensive mindset. Hopefully we can just park the bus. Just telling Vilele there's no pressure on him today, and uh, hopefully he doesn't mess anything up. That's a good ball over uh, to the left side, but uh, Newtow's left-sided winger puts that over the top. And we have brought on uh, uh, Vilele now for Moeaga. In the 21st minute, that change was made. Hopefully that injury isn't serious. I would expect with a dead leg, uh, he probably will only be out for maybe a week, two weeks, if that. You know, hopefully even less than that. We do have a pretty good medical staff. Um, but you never know in Tuvalu at this lower level. Sometimes minor injuries can hold people out for a long time. So I'm always a little bit cautious in estimating how long people will be out. Tini Lau over to Tilogo. Tilogo dribbles inside. Now to Sela on the ball. He's dispossessed, but Ward still has it. Ward needs to get rid of it. He finds Tui. To Sela. Ward. Oh, that's a good ball over for Tini Lau, who shoots it on target, uh, but didn't get a whole lot of power on that. Tini Lau does not seem to have remembered his shooting boost today. He put that chance wide earlier on, and that was a very tame effort there near the end of the first half. Really needed uh, both of his chances to be converted, and he hasn't done it. Ah, that was a disappointing performance. I quite agree. Um, but do I want the players to become demotivated? A couple guys, Tusela and Tini Lau, looking nervous. So would it help to tell them how bad they've been? I don't know. Uh, what are our other options? We could tell them they've been unlucky. We could tell them that they're performing well and the result will come. Um, let's go for that one just try and give them a morale boost and a lot of the players looking delighted so that's good let's just hope that they don't get complacent <laughs> always a risk in fm <laughs> yeah they, when you become you know a team that really is sort of top dog in any given division and hell's teeth are certainly that in tuvalu at the moment there's you know you're all you're always your first concern has to be making sure your players don't get lazy and complacent. That's a good long ball. Tini Lau brings it down, and Tui has it now. Tui holding up play well until he finds Tologo, then Tusela, then Ward. Ward been quite quiet today. We need him to come into things. Play back for Ofati. Pearson in possession. Lima Lofa. Ward. Tusela. Tusela can find Tini Lau ahead of him. He does. Tini Lau plays it out for Tologo. Tusela again. Concerted spell of possession for Hell's Teeth here. Ward. Teeny Lau plays it long. Tui! Oh, his first touch took him much too wide. Uh, he did get that shot on target. It's saved, and we do have a corner now. Lima Lofa will whip this in. That's a decent ball. Unfortunately, it is uh, headed away, but not permanently. Lima Lofa puts that in again, but Vilele, the goalkeeper for Neotau, is first to that. We are still nil-nil here as we head into uh, the... Um, second half chances really really few and far between here in this match guys T 
Tiute whips that in. Oh dear, Tupe really could have put that in. Instead, he laid it off for someone else. And luckily, that has been blocked. But I really thought that was going to be the goal that put Newtel one up. Alasana, the center back offside there. Very odd. Hmm. Newtel again in attack here. Hopefully he could be dispossessed by Lima Lofa, but he's not. Luckily, um, Alasana puts that well to Tapase's left, and uh, that long shot has not troubled us. Looks like we do have a highlight here. Let's watch this before we use another substitute. Ward, that's a terrible ball for Tui, and now Newtow can counter. That ball has gone past Ale on the left side, and Alasana picks up that long ball. To logo now on the right for the Orange Demons. He finds Ward. Teeny Lau in a lot of space. Tui now. Tui lays it back for Teeny Lau. Teeny Lau to Ward. Ward. Tui! Tui puts it in. And the man in form puts Hell's Teeth one goal up. It has been disallowed, though. He's offside. Oh, he's offside. So it is still nil-nil here at the Tuvalu Sports Ground. And uh, this would be a very disappointing result for Hell's Teeth uh, and a terrible match to have shown in a live con, but two, we can find Ward here. Ward, his first touch didn't take him far enough ahead, and that ball from Teeny Lau has been quite poor. Teeny Lau once again in possession, plays it back to Lima Lofa. Teeny Lau, Ward, this is good passing here. Don't want to be too hard on the guys. Tusela now should look for Tui ahead of him. We've said Teeny Lau. Teeny Lau with an absolute screamer. Well done. And that one is not coming back. 1-0 to the Orange Demons here at the Tuvalu Sports Ground in Funafuti. It was pretty obvious what uh, Tusela was going to do, but I didn't expect him to play it to Teeny Lau. I, I th really thought he was going to go for Tui. Um, and it was a difficult finish from, from Teeny Lau from about maybe 17 yards away. Uh, I, I, I'm thrilled that he that he managed to put that into the top right-hand corner of the net. Um, I mean, that was by far the, the most difficult chance Teeny Lau has had today. He had a couple in the first half with it were much, much easier than that. So the fact that he has managed to put that quite difficult chance on target, um, really, really thrilling. How are we doing condition-wise? Usually Pearson tends to get quite tired by this stage in the match. And given that we have a match in four days' time, I think we are going to bring the captain off. Um, we could bring Filioma on. Olofasio is an option. Um, we need to build up Filioma's match fitness, so let's bring him on. Filioma, another one of those players who's been with us since the beginning. Uh, he's pretty garbage in terms of his attributes. Um, but he is really, really... Um, he, I mean... I always I always use the phrase loyal servant to the club and I get very tired of it but really that's quite true of Filioma. He has been he's never been a starter regularly for us uh in in all of the club's history but um always has found his found a way to keep himself in the team. I think part of that is because he's really one of the only players who can effectively play uh at in defensive midfield for us and he's always been pretty good as a ball winning midfielder and that's um something that that uh, has has always endeared him to me because I do love a good uh, tough tackling ball winning midfielder and we're going to bring on Filioma here today he's also a decent free kick taker and so you never know you know if you if, if your team wins uh, uh, a late chance from from a set piece he's the kind of player who can who can really make a difference for you in that area um, let's see. Let's use our final substitution as we have headed into the final 10 minutes here. Conventional Wisdom would say bring on a defender. Um, well, first of all, let's switch over our team instructions. We are going to go to a lower tempo. And should I switch on waste time or is that a death sentence? Yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to see what happens here and see if I pay for it. Um, and then let's bring on, shall we bring on Tito Tui? We could, could bring on Malesi Aliu. Mm. But I think we're going to bring on Tui. I think we're going to bring on Tui. How is our defense performing? Has anybody performed really poorly? No, everybody's played pretty well, so I don't see any reason to make a major change there. You know what? Let's bring on Aliu. He can handle 10 minutes. We're going to bring him on for Lee Malofa, who's been a little bit... Or shall we bring him on for Tologo, who's also been quite poor? I'm going to bring him on for Tologo over on the right-hand side. So Melissi Aliu will come on for us. He, of course, scored that absolute... Uh, absolutely delightful goal 
uh, from a, a free kick against, who was it, Kosa in our first match of the OFC Champions League in a live com. Um, he had two pretty horrendous performances for us then in the in the later two matches of the group stage, um, which is really disappointing. But um, he, he is still an incredibly useful player for us, and he is our vice captain uh, now that uh, Alafi Pattaya has uh, been cut from the team and left the club. Could be a highlight for Hell's Teeth here. Aliu on the right-hand side. Now to Sela. Aliu. Aliu, who has fresh legs. Thought he, perhaps he could have dribbled around his man instead. He looks into the middle for Tusela. Now Filioma. Now Tui. Tusela once again. Lee Malofo has got a lot of space here. Ward. Tui. Oh. It, Tui's first touch really brought that into the path of the defender. Um, so we're, we're lucky to have won a corner here. But um, we have still won a corner. Aliu now over the ball. Taking, all, taking his time as we've asked him to. That ball's going to be much too close to the goalkeeper. Much too close to the goalkeeper, and you could see it all the way. A long ball over the top that's going to go right back to the goalkeeper. So three minutes left here uh, in regular time. Obviously, there will be added time. Usually, there's not very much in Tuvala. That's a pretty uh, horrendous long kick from the goalkeeper. Aliu will retain possession here. Now, Alasana looks for Tini Lau. Alasana once again, Ward. And we could have numbers here. Miscommunication. Ward runs into the path of uh, Tui. And unfortunately, that promising attack has come to nothing. Alasana in trouble now, and he does just play it out for a corner. The right decision, but disappointing that he worked himself into that mess in the first place. Tini Lau, Tui, another corner. Again, the right decision, the conservative decision to give up another corner, but better than trying to head it back into the path of a new Tau striker. And that one has been successfully cleared out, I believe, by Ward. Can Tui get to this? Oh, Fati has won it. That is fantastic work, Ray, from the uh, from the center back who can also play on the wings, Fati. He's not a player who I really talked about in the sort of player diary section, but a player that's been pretty consistent and useful for us, and he has managed to get himself a couple goals, actually. Tapase will clean up that woeful cross from deep and finds Lima Lofa. But that highlight is over. And it looks like we could be heading into the closing highlight of the match. Not a really uh, exciting match for you guys to see in a live com, but hopefully it will end in a victory for us. Uh, Lima Lofa has the ball on the wing, and we can just play it into the corner now if it suits us. Come on. Ward for a, with a great through ball to Teeny Lau. And in stoppage time, Teeny Lau gets himself a brace. That puts a smile on my face. What an absolutely fantastic assist from Olalofa Ward. Let's see this here. Tusela and Ward looks like he's... It's a no-look! It's a no-look assist for Teeny Lau. Oh my, what an absolutely superb, superb assist there from Ward to get Teeny Lau his second goal of the match. Oh, Lofa Ward, just such a promising looking player. He can do everything. He's an absolutely spectacular goal scorer. He's, as you can see there, a pretty decent passer. I mean, his, his, his promise for the future is absolutely unmistakable. A lot of the players looking either frustrated or complacent, which is not ideal. Um, what's going to help them? Should I should I just praise them? Tell them they did really well? I'm very pleased with the result in your performance, guys. And hopefully that'll, that'll help raise the morale. So another victory for Hell's Teeth here, guys. Wasn't terribly convincing, uh, but we did control all of the matches, you can see. Newtown never got a shot on target. Um, you know, that, that that's the sort of result that you would expect and hope to get for when using that quite defensive Tengaku uh, formation. I, I decided not to go with the Awendo just because I don't want it to wear out its welcome. You know, teams will figure out your tactics if you use them too much. Um, so, pleased that we managed to get that 2-0 victory there over Newtown. Uh, in the end, I think we did deserve a, a bigger result than that, but three points is, is three points. Let's have a look at the impact that's had on the table. It puts us four points clear of Hame Amimi uh, with a game in hand over the green and red. So that's going to be it for today's Livecom, guys. Health Teeth in fantastic, fantastic form. Olaf Award looking like a player who we are going to be singing the praises of for many years to come. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this live com. I have been Yard Offside FM. Please like, please subscribe, and please come back for episode 18 of The Triumph.